اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة We were walking to the masjid Al-Masjid Al-Haram Myself and my mother It was the Friday before Hajj Millions of people had already flocked into Mecca we went to the masjid an hour and a half before the prayer or before the khutbah started. And for those who have been to Hajj before, an hour and a half before the khutbah is very late. And so we ended up in the streets. We were not able to enter the masjid. Sitting in the heat, trying to look for shade. But every shaded area, they were already, it was already full of people as everyone was looking for shade. And so we sat and I was trying to calculate to see if I could get in a place where it's right now, it's in the, it's in the sun, but in maybe five, 10 minutes, we will be in the shade. Alhamdulillah, I found a place, five, 10 minutes later, the shade came as a result of the buildings, of course. While I was sitting there, something, a few things actually happened. First, somebody walked by. There are plenty of trash bins on the area, in the road. In fact, there was a trash bin almost every, 50, every 10, 20 feet. But the person 
who passed by me tossed a box of juice right in front of me. He had at least 10 trash bins, trash, trash bins in front of him. But no, he just threw it in front of me. And some of that juice splattered on me. And I said, La ilaha illallah. <laughs> Is this how we are as an ummah? And you could see also, you could see, yes, there are a lot of people cleaning. But it seems like the only people who are actually putting trash in the bins are the cleaners themselves. And as for the people, most of them just tossed it wherever they can find. And I start thinking, is this how it is? This is why, our, that's, this is why we are like this. In this ummah. And then something else happened. Right now there are a lot of constructions. There's a lot of construction going on in Mecca. With all the buildings that are under construction and all the projects that are underway, there are huge, pit, huge pits, pits and construction areas. But there is an area behind a barrier that's a danger, of course. Behind a the barrier, there's an area that was shaded. And everyone, of course, is looking for shade. Especially everyone who's coming now is coming late. They're not going to find any place to sit in the shade. So it only takes one person to set an example. One person decides to hop over that fence or hop over that barrier. Of course, it's dangerous to do so because there are huge pits because they're building skyscrapers and the taller the buildings are, the, the, the deeper the pits are going to be. So this, guy, this person jumps over. And of course, people see that, oh, okay. He's sitting in the shade. He's enjoying the shade. A Couple of other people start jumping over also. The police start to realize what's happening and they come and try to stop people. They're prevent, trying to prevent people for their own safety, but people are pushing and yelling and screaming, trying to hop over, trying to escape. The police officers and there were only two or three that were trying to do that and of course a whole bunch of people trying to hop over the barrier that's not going to work and so it keeps on going and there's chaos more police officers come and there's it's, it's getting very very chaotic everyone's screaming yelling pushing and i even felt like maybe we are not in a good area because this is how stampedes happen sometimes and so i was actually thinking about moving from that area and then a miracle happened. A sound resonated from the mountains of Mecca. And it said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As soon as the salams were resonated, resonated in the mountains, from the mountains of Mecca, because you can hear it, everybody sat where they were. Nobody, nobody continued pushing. Nobody screamed and yelled or said anything. Everybody knew what to do. Everyone sat down where they were listening to one man. Something happened, all of a sudden everybody knew what to do. Everybody behaved themselves. The police officers no longer needed to push people back. Everyone sat down listening to one man. And then, when the khutbah ended, the Imam said, Stow, staqimu, i'tadilu. Stow. Everyone line up in straight rows. People from all different, different parts of the world, coming from different backgrounds, everybody knew what to do. It took them less than five seconds. It took them less than five seconds. Over two million people from different parts of the world speaking different languages. Everybody knew what to do. Everyone lined up in straight rows. <coughs> and then the Imam said, Allahu Akbar. And he went down to Ruku and Sujood. Everyone went down in synchrony. And during the prayer, I said to myself, I was thinking to myself, Ya Abdul Bari, there is hope, there is hope. I was thinking about, what. look at the situation of the Ummah right now. Then you start to realize, as long as we follow the injunctions, we follow, we embody the teachings of the Qur'an in our daily lives, we are the best people. 
We're the most organized of people. When we say Allahu Akbar, when we say Allah is the greatest, when we start to realize that we are the best, and Allah describes us as being the best ummah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof, wa tanhawna anil munkar, wa tu'minuna billah. You are the best of nations brought forth for humanity. You enjoy that which is good and forbid that which is evil. And you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so every time after Ramadan, we speak about change. When Ramadan comes, we speak about change. When you go make Hajj, we speak about change. When something happens in our lives, we say, inshallah, we will change. We always speak about change. But where does change start? There's so many aspects and so many things that we can reflect upon and think about. Where does it start? Well, we look at the situation of the ummah. And sometimes we make dua and we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And then you watch the news and it seems like it only gets worse. Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Why is that the case? Why? Some of us, we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes some of us, we might even say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, why are you not responding to me? But you know what the question is? The question that we should be asking is not, why are you not responding to me? No. The question that we should be asking is, why are we not responding to Allah? Because when we respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to us. So when it comes to change, that's where we should start. The Qur'an is still the same Qur'an that was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu over 1400 years ago. That was recited by the companions over 1400 years ago. The same Qur'an that they recited is the same Qur'an that we have with us today. The same words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have been preserved in the books of Sunnah, the Sunan, in the books of Sahih, Sahih Bukhari and Muslim and others. They have been preserved for us. These are the exact same words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Islam hasn't changed. But the thing that has changed is us. We've changed. But what, what kind of change? What change? Where have we changed? We've changed in the way we respond to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. When you look at during the time of the Prophet wasallam, the companions, whenever they heard an injunction, when they heard a Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, they would say, that's the Sunnah, I'm going to try to practice it, and I'm going to try to do it as much of it as I can. But us, sometimes we hear, oh, what's the ruling on that? It's Sunnah, oh, Alhamdulillah, I don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. It's sunnah. Oh, I don't have to do it. When it's a sunnah to them, they want it to do. They want to follow. The, uh, they want to embody the teachings of the Quran and the sunnah in their daily lives. And they were quick in following the orders of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa taala and the injunctions in the Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa taala revealed the verses prohibiting khamr, prohibiting wine and intoxicants. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a caller onto the streets of Medina. And he said, Ala inna al khamra qad hurrimat. Ala inna al khamra qad hurrimat. Hear ye, hear ye. Intoxicants, wine and alcohol have been prohibited. He goes from one street, from one alleyway to the next, announcing to the people that it has become haram, that it's no longer permissible for you to drink wine and alcohol. And this was in Medina. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he said, at that moment I was in the house of Abu Talha, and some of us were drinking, others had lifted the cup to their mouths, and others were pouring. As soon as we heard the caller making the announcement, everybody stopped what they were doing. 
Nobody said, let me finish this last glass. Nobody said, let me fin let us finish this last container. After this, we won't drink anymore. Nobody said, okay, this, this is the last gathering. No, they stopped immediately. Did they stop only? Do you know what else they did? They took the containers. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he said the companions went and took the containers and everybody, at the same point, same time, they started pouring the wine onto the streets of Medina until the wine was flowing in the streets of Medina. Everybody went and they start pouring that immediately. Did they stop there? No. They took it another step. They took the containers and they smashed the containers so that they wouldn't even have an opportunity to come back to it or think about it ever again. The containers they smashed. Now I want you to look at that, think about that situation during that time and think about, think about our situation and how we are as Muslims nowadays. When we see that something is haram, what do we do? We say, inshallah, next week. Inshallah, after I graduate. Inshallah, after I get married. Inshallah, after I make hajj. Inshallah, inshallah. The sun may rise tomorrow, but we may not. But we always procrastinate. And then when we ask Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, send us relief. We want it immediately. But when Allah tells us to respond to Him, we delay and we procrastinate. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Know Allah in times of heart, know, in, know Allah in times of ease, and He'll know you in times of hardship. Meaning, respond to Allah in times of ease, and Allah will respond to you in times of hardship. And that's why if we respond to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to us. And that's why if you want to change, change in how you respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why some of us, we make our decisions not based on what's best for us, based on what the Quran and the Sunnah says. No, we make decisions based, our, based on our own whims and desires. And then we try to find someone or something to justify our decisions. I'll give you an example. Sometimes a person will come and say, Sheikh, Sheikh, is it permissible for me to buy a house? Because my situation, my circumstances like this, I mean, you know, there's, uh, can I buy it from, you like, an interest-based mortgage? And so the Sheikh might say, no, it's not permissible, be patient. Be patient. If you, this is something that is considered a major sin. Considered a major sin. And so the, that person just goes away. But next time another sheikh comes from out of town, he asks the same question. And that sheikh will say the same thing and will say to him, No, brother, it's not permissible. It's not permissible. And then again, he says, Alhamdulillah. But then when he goes out of town, he goes to another city or another town, he meets another sheikh. Sheikh, he asks the exact same question again. And then he goes to another person, he asks the exact same question. And he's getting the same answer. No, 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 haram, 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 not permissible. But then he finds somebody. And he asks that person again. You know, my situation is like this and that. And he's trying to, he's trying to word his, his, his question to, to the point where it makes it to make it easier for the shaykh to say it's halal. In fact, he tries to change some of the wordings and try to tries to manipulate the answer by using words in his questions that make it more difficult upon him. Maybe he's in dire straits and difficult situation. There's no other house. Nobody will rent their house to me ever again. Like, and my, my family is too big, too huge. And it's too expensive. It's the same as paying mortgage and so forth. And then he'll get one shaykh to say, in that situation, it's okay. It's okay. Then he goes, a sheikh who a sheikh? The sheikh, real sheikh, that's a real sheikh right there. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And he goes forward with it, right? After, he goes forward with, with it. Why? But the thing is what, is, what has he done? Is he looking for the truth? He's not looking for the truth. He has already made his decision. He is only trying to find someone to justify his decision. To justify his decisions. And the, the, the decision that he has already made to justify his desire. And you know, in, in, in the times that we are living in right now, 
If you want a particular answer, you will find it. Trust me, you will find it. Whether it's the truth or not, that's a different matter. But if you want something to be halal, you will find someone who will say it's halal. But are you following the truth? Are you looking to follow the Quran and the Sunnah? Are you looking to follow the injunctions of the Quran and the Sunnah? Are you looking to follow that or your desires? And so that's why it's very dangerous for someone, for someone to always look for justification for someone to, to, to justification for his decisions you have to look for the truth and you follow the truth if you know that that is the truth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this point very clear and this point is so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by himself he swears by himself in Surah Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse فَلَا وَرَبِّكْ إِنَّيْ بَا يُوَ لُورَ مُحَمَّدْ Allah is swearing by himself he swears by the sun and the moon and the stars and the day and the night. He swears by whatsoever he pleases. But if he swears by something, it's to signify and to emphasize a point that's coming up. But if he swears by himself, how much more important is this point that's coming up? Allah says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They shall not have faith, they shall not believe. حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Until they make you a judge in all their disputes amongst themselves. ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا And they find no resistance in themselves whatsoever. وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا And they, sur they surrender to it with the fullest of conviction. That means they know it's haram. They surrender to it. They say, Ya Allah, you know what's best. Allah ya'lamu man khalaqa wa huwa al khabir. Does he not know whom he has created? And he's the all subtle, all aware. Allah knows us. And he, he's more merciful towards us than we are towards ourselves. When he says something is haram, then stay away from it because it's harmful. Haram even sounds like harm. Just remember that. Haram equals harm. It's not good for you. Stay away from it. If Allah tells you to do something, do of it as much as you can. Because it's all good for you. And be quick. Don't procrastinate. Don't procrastinate. Procrastination is very dangerous. Especially when you know the truth. Especially when you know what's right and what's wrong. What's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And you refuse to accept it. That's dangerous. That's what the Jews did. That's what the Yehud did, that's what they did. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ When they went astray out of knowledge, they knew the truth, but they refused to accept it. And so Allah Himself, He says, فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ Allah made their hearts go astray. Allah made their hearts go astray. You may be able to see the truth now, but if you start lying to yourself often enough, you start believing it. You start believing it, even though you know it's false. At the beginning you may know it's false, but later on you may not be able to see that. And you will not see the truth as it is being the truth, but you will see the truth as being falsehood, and falsehood as being the truth. And that's why, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to do something, be quick. Be quick in following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if He says something is prohibited, then be quick. And staying away from that. I'll give you another example during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Rawaha, a companion, a Sahabi, Ansari, came to the masjid. He was walking to the masjid. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was giving him the, a khutbah. And he said, Ijlisu, everybody. He saw some people standing up in the back of the masjid. And he said, everybody sit down, everybody sit down. Abdullah ibn Rawaha, when he heard these words, 
these were familiar words. Come, this, this, was a, this was a voice, that, this was a familiar voice from the pulpit of the Prophet وسلم, and that said, sit down. He was outside the masjid. He had not even entered the masjid yet. He was still on his way to the masjid, but he heard the orders and he heard the command to say, sit down. And he sat down outside. He did not take another step. He was afraid to take another step after an order came from a familiar voice which was the voice of the Prophet and he sat there. The order wasn't even directed towards him but he was afraid of going against the orders of the Prophet He sat down outside the masjid. People who came after him would pass him by and look at him. Why is he sitting outside the masjid? But he refused to move because the Prophet ﷺ said, sit down. And then afterwards, some of the companions came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, we saw Abdullah ibn Rawaha sitting outside the masjid in the sun. And the Messenger of Allah ﷺ asked him why he did that. And then the Prophet ﷺ said to him, may Allah increase you in the obedience of Allah and His Messenger. That's how the companions of the Prophet ﷺ were. In, or, in following the orders of the, in orders of the, of the, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu and following the commandments of Islam. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen. والعاقبة للمتقين والعدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون Another change that we have to make especially in the United States of America living and it, it's, we're living in strange times indeed. Strange times indeed. Where, where, the, where a president, where a president every single day, that acts like just, acts like a teenager when dealing with other people. Where there are people who are, like, there's so much hate spewing from, sometimes from, the, from, from, from the White House, and also, some, if you watch, not that I'm telling you to watch Fox News or anything like that, you'll see hate being spewed left and right. We might say, Subhanallah, La ilaha illallah. What can we do about it? Well, let me tell you something. We can do something about it, and we need to do something about it. We need to change as an ummah. We need to change as a Muslim community in the United States of America. What change? We as Muslims, Allah describes us as being the best. You are the best of nations brought forth for humanity. That means we have to be the best. We have to be the best neighbors. We have to be the best co-workers. We have to be the best classmates. We have to be the best in whatever we do. We have to be the most honest of people. We have to make a difference, not just be different. People out there looking at it are looking at us as being different. But we can't just be different. We have to make a difference. If there are people who are in need, if there are homeless people in Orlando, we have to be at the soup kitchens. If there are disasters, hurricanes and earthquakes, we as Muslims have to be the first to be there. That's what our Prophet ﷺ taught us to do. That's what the Quran teaches us to do, to be the best, the most kind, the most helpful. And you know what? It will not matter what Fox says. It will not matter what Donald Trump says. If we embody the teaching of the Qur'an in our daily lives, it will not matter because you know what they say? Your actions speak so loud, I can't hear what you're saying. You can drown all that out by your actions. Because your neighbors will know and your neighbors will say, I know a Muslim. He's my neighbor and he's the best neighbor I have ever had. When he walks in the streets of my neighborhood, he doesn't wait for the city to clean the streets, he picks up the trash. That's what our deen teaches us, not throwing trash. To pick up the trash, that's part of faith, part of our iman. Whether people see it or not, Allah knows. What makes us, what makes us the best is we enjoying that, which, enjoying that which is good and forbid that which is evil. 
وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ And we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even if nobody sees us, we are the best, the most honest. And that's why at work, your co-workers will know. Oh, so and so, I know a Muslim. Donald Trump, you're a liar. I mean, you lie about many things, but about, especially about Muslims also. You know how I know? I have a Muslim co-worker. I have a Muslim co-worker. And he's the most honest person I've ever known. He never even checks his personal email when he's at work. So honest. That's what we need to be. We need to be examples for other people. We can't just be ordinary. We have to be extraordinary. Our deen is the best. We have been blessed to have Islam. If we embody the teachings of Islam in our daily lives, as, as the companions described, the character of the Prophet Quran. His character was the Quran. Most people out there are not going to be reading the Quran. Do you know the only Quran they're going to be reading? The only Quran that most people out there are going to be reading is us through our actions. And that's why we have to embody the teachings of the Quran in our daily lives. We have to stop blaming the times that we are living in. There's nothing wrong with the times that we are living in. As Al Imam Shafi'i he said, we blame the times that we are living in, but there's nothing wrong with the times that we are living in. The only thing that's wrong with the times that we are living in is us. And that's why we have to change. And we have to make the change. We have to be the change that we want to see. We have to be the Muslim that we want to meet. And if we do that, then change will happen around us. Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawm. Allah will not change what's in the people. Hatta yughayiru ma bi anfusihim. Until they change what's in themselves. We need change. And we need now. I'm not talking about Obama change here. I'm talking about la ilaha illallah change. That's what I'm talking about. That's the change that we need. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the best of this world in the hereafter. Allahumma aghfir wal muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa maulaha Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin Allahumma izz al-islam wal muslimin Allahumma izz al-islam wal muslimin wa adhill al-shirk wal mushrikin wa damir a'da'ak a'da'a'ad-din Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقنا الصلاة الله أكبر